this is Amy from Busy Beads and Mail. I'm coming back to you today to go over a um, pendant tutorial that I came up with. The tutorial's been on the website for sale for a little while now. It's $4.95. Um, it's an instant download, so once you pay, you can go ahead and download it and get started. But I wanted to go over it um, in a video to show you uh, exactly what the steps are and um, just kind of go through it so that you can see in person how it works. All right, well, first of all, I want to show you some examples of this pendant. Uh, so here's a light vitriol pendant with bright aluminum jump rings. Um, it's very, very striking. It's one of my favorites. Uh, then we also have, and this is actually the one that I made uh, for the tutorial. The pictures in there are of this pendant. And it's a sapphire uh, Swarovski crystal with um, jeweler's brass jump rings and some, then some black anodized aluminum. And then I decided I wanted to try to put this into a bracelet. So I saw on YouTube, uh, one of my favorite uh, YouTube Kumahimo ladies actually had a pattern for a necklace where you put the Swarovski crystals along the edge using super duos, which are basically two hold, um, two hold beads. So I thought, well, that'd be really cool if I could incorporate the pendant into it. So this was my first get, my first go at it, I guess you could say, and I. You can see I started the braid at the pendant and worked my way down and then finished it on both sides. Um, and I'm just not satisfied with it. it. It looks great. I love it. I actually turned it into a choker with some uh, ribbon at the back and a, and a um, clasp. It actually looks really, really good on um, as a choker. It, it'd be perfect for, heck, proms, even a wedding. I, I mean, it really looks good on. I just wasn't very... Um, happy with the way this looks. So I went ahead and I did another one with a Siam Swarovski crystal and bright aluminum jump rings. And this time I was able to weave the threads of the Kumahimo braid through the back of the pendant. So I was able to get the beads right up next to the pendant. Now this isn't going to be, um, this isn't my final pattern on this because I don't know if you can see that it's not even like there's more beads over here than there is here this is a little thicker this is thinner so I still have to come up with a good transition here um, for the for the pattern but I'd like to do a tutorial on how to incorporate the pendant that we're gonna make today into a Kumihimo bracelet uh, two of my loves Kumihimo and chainmail all-in-one so what could be better uh, and I just did it with a uh, magnetic clasp. So it's really, really nice. And it looks really, really good on, I think. So that's what it looks like on. I just, I think it looks really good. I like it. So first things first, all right, let me uh, go ahead and get rid of some of these things. And then I'll get everything laid out for the tutorial. And then uh, we can get started. All right, I'll be right back. The first thing we need is we need to have the 14 millimeter Swarovski Rivoli. This one actually is crystal AB. I don't know if you can see it. It's really very, very pretty. Um, and then you need uh, one 16 gauge 3 8 in inch jump ring, and that needs to be closed. And then you need um, five of the seven, of 730 seconds, 18 gauge 730 seconds jump rings. Those also need to be closed. You need 10 18 gauge 5 30 seconds jump rings. You need to open those. And then you'll also need a few extras. But I'll explain what that's for. Those are ones I've already closed. I'll explain what that's for um, here in a little bit. So 10 open and then just a few extras. And then you'll need um, 19 of the 18 gauge 1 8 inch jump rings. All of those need to be open as well. And then you need six 18 gauge, three sixteenth inch jump rings. And those need to be open as well. And again, this is all in the instructions. Um, two sets of chain nose pliers. These are bead along pliers. They're actually specifically for chain mail. I don't know if you can see how the, um, the padding on one side is thicker than the padding on the other side. 
So that way you can put the extra padding to whatever side you get more um, stress and wear on. I put it against my fingers, but um, you can also put it against your palm. And then the last little thing you'll need is just twist ties. Just generic, general twist ties out of the trash bags, the kitchen trash bag box. And I'll tell you why you need those in a second. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and open and close these. If I need to, I'll just fast forward. Um, but uh, so yeah, just bear with me while I open and close everything per the instructions. And while I'm opening up these last few, I guess I should just explain and put out there that this is probably more of an intermediate um, tutorial. You, you need to know how to open and close jump rings. I don't show you how to do that here. Um, you need to know the general process of weaving jump rings together. Um, I'll show you a little bit of that here. Of course, there's tons and tons of videos on YouTube about beginning chain mail. So um, if you take a look at this and think it's a little too advanced, just brush up on some stuff and um, take a look at some videos. Do a couple more patterns until you get really comfortable with it. And then, um, and then come on back. It's not the hardest pendant tutorial I've seen, um, but it's... It's not like a beginner thing. If it... All right, so I've got everything opened and closed. And in the first step, we're gonna use the uh, 16 gauge 3 8 inch jump ring. We're also gonna use the 7 32nd inch jump rings. And the uh, Rivoli will use that last, but I'm gonna keep it here, just show you throughout the process how it fits into the equation. Um, and then we're gonna need five of the uh, 5 32nd inch jump rings just for this first step. And all right, let's show you, let's get started. So you'll take the larger 3 8 inch jump ring and you'll take one of the 5 30 seconds and just put the 3 8 inch through there. Then you're gonna wanna put on two of the closed 7 30 seconds inch jump rings. Go ahead and close that 5 30 second jump ring. And then when you lay it down, you'll be able to see it's got a little pattern to it and you want to make sure that they're laying over each other in this fashion. The top one over the bottom one and you'll want the 532nd ring to kind of be leaning to the right. Um, okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to take the top 732nd jump ring and you're going to actually just flip it, rotate it back, or I should say flip it back because this one is just going to rotate down. So then you'll see the 532nd still leaning to the same way, but now you've got the 732nd over the 3 8 inch and the 732nd over the 3 8 inch. All right, so now you wanna go ahead and try to pick up the whole thing and keep it in that um, configuration. And then take another 730, or 532nd, sorry about that, 532nd jump ring and you're going to want to put it through that 732nd and then around the 3 8 and then just put another 732nd on there. Go ahead and close it. I don't know if you heard that snap. That snap just means that the ends of the jump ring are actually touching, which is good. All right, so then what we want to do is just take that and rotate it down again. You just want to make sure that this first one doesn't try to flip back on you. So it's just rotated down like that. All right, pick up another 532nd through the 732nd around the 3 8 and put on another 732nd and close it. All right. And then you'll let me make sure that looks right. Yep. You'll rotate that down. And then one more time for the 532nd 
5 30 second around the 3 8 and add a 7 30 second and then go ahead and close that all right so I'm gonna go ahead and set this down now make sure everything's where it's supposed to be so once I rotate this one up it'll stay on top this first little guy got a little a little whopper John so I just have to put him back into place um, oh he went through the middle didn't he yep so pick him up and easier said than done pick him up there we go okay I'm gonna rotate that down just so you can kinda see so you'll see that the final connection we have to make is just to join those two 7 30 seconds together but all of the 5 30 seconds are all angling in the same direction around the 3 8 inch so now you want to pick up the whole piece make sure that guy stays out there pick up the final 5 30 second for this step put it around the 7 30 seconds go around the 3 8 inch and then you can either try to pop that on at the bottom or pop it on the top. It doesn't really matter. Um, just whatever you find more comfortable. I usually try to forget that it's there and pretend like I'm just adding a new one. And that seems to work pretty well. So that's the beginnings of the base for the pendant. The Swarovski will kind of sit in there once we make the cage to go around it. All right, so the next step we're gonna wanna do let me make sure I'm doing it per the instructions, which I am going to say I use these instructions every time I make one of these pendants, even though I've probably made 12 of them just to make sure that I have the steps right. Um, one mistake and it kind of collapses the whole thing and it just doesn't look right. So, all right. So now the next step is we're going to add the 1 8 inch jump rings. Okay. And so here we've got five, seven, 30 seconds. We're going to add four one eighth inch to three of those and three one eighth inch to two of them. And that'll make sense here in a minute. So I like to kind of separate them out. So there's four and four, four, three, three. And you actually have an extra one, which is for the bale at the very end. So the ones that you have the three on, they have to go next to each other. Oh, they're over here. They have to sit next to each other. They can't have, you can't have a three here and a three here with fours. They have to sit next to each other and that's because um, they will form the bale at the end. So it will make more sense here in a minute. Um, so go ahead and put four of the one eighth inch onto three of the five thirty seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here for the first one and then I'll probably fast forward real quick through the other three and then I'll slow it down and come back when it's time to put on the three. All right, so there's your first one with four. Okay, on to the next one. All right, so now we're going to put on the three. And like I said before, they have to be next to each other for it to work out right. All right, so we've got the three on two, we've got four on three again just to show you kind of what's going to happen now we're going to take those and we're going to combine them together and start making the cage that goes around the sides to hold it in so this is where the um where the 316 jump rings takes 
takes effect, takes place. And you're also going to have an extra one here for this. You only need five. And that again is for the bail, which I'll show you here in a second. So what you're going to want to do is imagine splitting all four of these into two sections. Now, of course, where there's the three, there'll be two on one side and one on the other side. So the, where they're the two, that's going to be part of the cage. And then this one at the top there, we're going to make the pendant or the bail from that one. So you'll have two and two, two and one, one, two, and then two and two. So you want to kind of pay attention. You're not combining all four on the same jump ring again. You're combining the four between the two. So what you want to do is you'll take an open 3 16th ring and I'll start at the top. You're going to want to grab two of the 1 8 inch on one and two on another and close it. And then real quick, I don't know if any of you can see this. I'm not sure. Um, these... 3 16 inch jump rings, when I bought them, I bought them as hand cut. Um, the supplier did give an example of the difference between hand cut and saw cut. And um, I said, oh, I don't care, hand cut's cheaper. So I don't know if you can see how it joins there. It's not even it's kind of a little offset even, and that's because of how it's hand cut. It almost like crushes one and puts pressure so that it doesn't cut evenly and it's not completely round anymore. Um, and then there's one of the 730 seconds. I don't even know if you can see that. The, the cut's right there and it is a saw cut. And so it joins together so cleanly you can't even tell it's there. So just a note to kind of point out there that when you are looking for jump rings, um, now if I was gonna use these on say, um, a piece of clothing, like a vest or um, a hat or something, then it probably wouldn't make as much difference uh, because it'd be hidden more. But because it's on this pendant, you can really see it now, I will be able to hide it at the end, so it's not all, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. But I just wanted to point that out, that if you have the choice between saw cut and hand cut, I always would pick saw cut. All right, so we got, that's the fourth one. So we've got one more, and this one is just picking up two, because that's, again, the bail which is what connects the pendant to the necklace, to the chain. That one doesn't even look round anymore. Again, not the end of the world. I'll make it work. Okay, so that's the back. You can tell that's the back because the original 3 8 inch, it's very visible. We're building on top of it. Uh, so there's the bail at the top. That's going to be the bail, I should say, at the top. And then we've got four little points there. Again, the pendant's going to go in the middle, and then we're going to pull that up around it. And that's what's going to take place now using the final 530 seconds jump rings. And the first four of these are easy peasy, not a problem. You just want to make sure that when you pick it up, you rotate these in towards the center of the pendant before you connect them. So you're going to want to connect them like this so that they rotate in. You don't want to connect them like that because then they rotate back and that's not going to hold anything in. So just make sure that they rotate towards the front middle of the pendant. And then you're going to add the 530 seconds and here it can get just a little confusing trying to figure out what is what what you need to do next so just be patient um, here's where I really try not to set the piece down again 
Um, if I set it down, chances are I'm going to lose my place and not be able to well, I mean, Eventually you can figure out where you were, but it just makes it easier to just not set it down. All right, so that's the third. And then we've got a fourth one. And then I'll kind of show you how the pendant fits. in the cage. Okay. So we have one last one to put on, but I want to kind of show you how the Swarovski fits. So it goes in underneath the 530 seconds you just put on. I don't know if you, you should be able to see that. This is the open spot. This is the one we still have to put on. And then I also want to point out that it needs to be sitting on top of these 1 8 inch jump rings. If it's down underneath, then it's not going to sit right and it's just not going to be centered. Now, if it's not that way when you fasten this last one, not the end of the world. It can be fixed. It's just a little bit harder to fix it. All right, and here's where my little tip and trick comes in with the twisty tie. So when I first started making these pendants, I would take one set of chain nose pliers and try to manipulate and squeeze those together while I was trying to get the last one on, and I would end up ruining these rings as well as this ring. So going to sleep one night, I couldn't get to sleep. My mind kept racing. And then it all of a sudden came to me. I said, there has to be something that can connect those or squeeze them together without ruining them. A twist tie. So you just go through one, go through the other, and then you're going to want to squeeze it as tight as you can and then twist. Now I have noticed that copper jump rings, for some reason, it seems to be a little looser, which isn't a bad thing. But if you wanted to use, um, if you wanted to try to use smaller jump rings at some point, maybe the three sixteenths could be five thirty seconds as well. I'm not sure, but uh, so this one with the copper it actually goes together pretty easy. But this is what the extras are for, the extra five thirty seconds, because as I'm trying to put this on chances are I'm forcing it and I'm going to mar it in some way, especially since it's copper. It's soft, but like I said, since there's extra play, it goes in pretty easy. Now, before I close it, I want to take off this twist tie. The other thing I like about twist ties is it has this paper on it, so it's not going to scratch up your jump rings. You could just use a scrap piece of uh, wire that you have sitting around, um, but like I said, I just like using these because it already has the paper on it. It's not going to scratch it up. All right, so take out the twist tie, and then go ahead and close it. Oh, see? There's not very much room in there. That's the only reason I like these pliers is because the nose is kind of stubby. So you can get in there and kind of get a little bit more leverage. And I think we did it. Let me make sure that they're all above the 1 8 inch. It is. And uh, I don't know if you can see that. It is a little wobbly in the back, but this pendant in the front isn't going anywhere. So that is the finished pendant. Now we just have to put on the bail. And then once I put on the bail, I'll show you a trick on how, ooh, that is very pretty with the copper. Look at that. I like that. I like how the, the Swarovski shows through the copper on the sides. Ooh, that's nice. All right, so now I'm going to, sorry, I digress. So now I'm going to show you how to make the bail. So I take one of the one extra one eighth inch jump ring and I'm going to go to where there was just the two. I'm going to pick up those two, run this through it, which can be a little difficult sometimes because there's a lot going through those one eighth inch. There it goes. Now when I do the bracelet, I actually don't need a bail, of course, so I go ahead and put the normal four on those two so that I have uh, uh, the two here. And it, that also helps to make it a little more sturdy, a little tighter. Um, 
but to make the bale I think is just prettier to have the two. All right, and so of course, if you put a chain on going this direction, then the pendant's gonna hang sideways on your neck, so you need another one. I like to use a 3 16th only because um, it's pretty universal for most chains. Most um, clasps and chains will go through it. Now, if you have, um, if you're making this for yourself and you have a specific chain in mind and it'll go through a smaller jump ring, then by all means use a smaller jump ring. Uh, most of mine I sell, so I want to make sure that they're universal. All right, and there you go. I'm going to put it through this just so you can see how it hangs. And that's it. Very pretty. So now what I like to do is I'm just going to go around and look to see where those kind of ugly connections are and just kind of rotate them. So they're around, ooh, that one's a little marred. I'm gonna have to fix that one. Yeah, I will. Is that a 532nd? Yeah, it is. All right, I'm gonna fix that one real quick and I might as well show you while I'm here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take it off. I don't remember doing that either, so. Uh, I should have had these open already, but I wasn't thinking. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Now, I didn't need the twist tie that time. Um, I don't know if that was a fluke or if it was just because it was already put together once it was just going to stay. Okay, that looks much better. All right, so I don't see anything there. So it looks like it was just that one that I needed to rotate. So there you go. There is your 14 millimeter Swarovski Rivoli chain mail pendant. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, be sure to like, my, uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I will be probably posting a um, tutorial on how to add this into that um, Kumihimo bracelet.